So are you looking to review how to construct a one proportion Z interval? Well, if so, then this question's for you. Number two from 2017. It's a one proportion Z interval. You can read the question if you haven't already. What I use with my students is the acronym PANIC to help them remember each part of you know, what we need to do when we construct an interval. So the first P here, that stands for making a statement about the parameter. What is the parameter that we're interested in? Like, what are we actually measuring? Then we have to talk about the assumptions that we must make and the conditions that uh, will satisfy those assumptions. We have to name the type of interval. We can either use a formula or we can write it out with words, doesn't matter. Uh, we need to tell what the interval is after we plug in our calculator. Most likely we're using a calculator, so we're gonna plug it in and get the interval. We have to write that down. And then as always, we end with a statement of conclusion and we put it in context to this problem. So if we go through all those different parts, then we will make sure that we have fully satisfied what it takes to construct and interpret a confidence interval. So let's get started with this problem here. Starting with a P, we're interested in the proportion of customers that fill their cup with soda when they ask for water. That's what this question is about. Of all the people who fill their cup, or of all the people who ask for a cup, for water, what proportion actually gets soda? So that's what we're interested in. The assumptions that we must use. Well, first off, we need to make sure that the data are independent, okay? So there's two things we look at. Sorry, I'm erasing things. The two things we're looking at if the data are independent is, number one, were they selected randomly? That guarantees independence, as well as is the population greater than 10 times the sample size? That means that each of the data points will also be independent. So those two things together will guarantee the independence. Furthermore, we have to make sure that the sample size is large enough. So to do that, we have to check to make sure that the number of successes and the number of failures is greater than 10. So some students like n times p hat has to be greater than 10 and n times q hat has to be greater than 10. So you have to figure them out. Here's the math for that, put it on the paper. So 23 and 57 are both greater than 10. So we can proceed with our interval because all the conditions have been met. Okay, we have to name the type of interval. This is a one proportion Z interval, easy enough. You can write the formula if you want, but most of the time we just use the name of it. Uh, after we put it in the calculator, let's figure out how to put that in our calculators. So most students will be using a, two, a TI-84. So hit stat, go to the left. These are all of the different tests and intervals that we have. So I like to scroll up to one proportion Z interval. You hit enter, and in this problem, X is the number of successes and N is the total number. So there are 23 out of 80 that are getting soda. That's what we're interested in here. The confidence level you have to put in as a percent or a decimal less than one. We hit calculate and we get the actual interval here. They tell you P hat, which is our sample proportion, and they tell you the sample size as well. So our interval is 0.188 to 0.387, if we're rounding correctly. So now we just need, ooh, where are we here? We named the type of interval, we named what the interval is, now we're making a conclusion in context. So we are 95% confident that the true proportion of customers that fill their cup with soda when they ask for water is between 18.8% and 38.7%, if you round it correctly. So that satisfies part A of this question. That's how you construct a confidence interval. Now part B just takes it one step further. Uh, they're saying, suppose that 3,000 customers in the month of June ask for a water cup and they want you to estimate how much the company will lose if it's you know 25 cents per cup. So that's not too difficult. So if we take the 3,000 customers and we find 18 and 38% of 3,000, we're gonna get 565 and 1,160. That's how many customers we can expect. And then it says that for each customer, the company loses 25 cents. So that's gonna give us uh, 141 to $290. So we're gonna make a statement in context, because this will be an AP question. At 25 cents per cup, a 95% interval estimate for the cost in June is between $141.25 and $290. That is the entire question right there. AP Stats, free response, 2017 number two, good luck.